everybody. How's it going? Uh, hopefully you all can hear me all right. Uh, call me new setup bug, because it's still new to me. Uh, my name is Bug. I'm in a band called uh, Bug Hunter, and I stream on Wednesdays, which is today. So uh, here's what we do um, on Wednesdays. This is different from Sundays. If you've been to a Sunday stream, you know what I'm talking about. On Wednesdays, I play a couple songs and take questions and chat, which is very different from Sundays. Uh, so let's see who's here. Uh, if you want, you can throw out uh, what song that you want to hear me play first, and I'll take roll call like that and see who's hanging out on a Wednesday. Um, Sloth of the Sweater is listening to me twice. Uh, Gaming Tinker. Advisory Tick, Mitchell Jennings, Cornfield Cryptid, Bubbles the Blue Fox is here in the house. Um, t- uh, s- that that one super cool Tony uh, Stashu and Jams is here, so we have a mod. So everybody be on your best behavior because Jams has been known to go rogue and ban everybody, including my dad. Uh, Lily's here, uh, Max Noble here. Uh, who else? That's it. Is that everybody? Normal bacon. Just a normal bacon. Nothing to see here. Um. Trent Kessinger. Hummingbird here. Jam says that has not happened in so long, but you know what? You banned my dad once, and it's hard to forget. Um, Gulf Ghost, Robin a Bank, uh, could play McCracken. That's a weird request. Why don't I? Maybe I'll get more viewers if I play my popular songs. That w- that's a novel concept. Uh, this is a true story. It's about a time on an airplane. I just stepped on a plane. My bag's on the shelf. I find my seat in the middle and plan to keep to myself. The pilot comes on, says there's been a delay. So I side buckle up and prepare for the wait. There's a middle-aged woman on my right by the window. No ring on her finger, maybe divorced or a widow. She's drafting an email, and from where I am seated, I can side-eye that shit, so of course I'm gonna read it. It said, Dear McCracken, this is already great, dude. It's got a pen pal and a killer last name. She opens with an inside joke And she's hoping to set a casual tone Her words carefully chosen She was sure that her week spent in Houston would drag But then a face from her past quickly changed all of that The trip was for business She's used to the travel But this time she's not ready to head back to Seattle And dear McCracken, I'd rather be off this plane I can't Admit the half of it that I want to say. Do I pretend? Do I push you away? I'm jet lagging, cracking, and I'll give you, I'll give you your space. Now I can tell by the abuse of the backspace key. There's a heart balanced on how her words are perceived. She's retyped that fourth paragraph four times, swinging the tone back and forth until she's so satisfied that he knows that even though their paths have diverged, there's an air of regret, but not enough to reverse. And I am stunned. There I sit, completely convinced that once you grow old, you stop dealing with this. The uncertain, the hurt, and the feeling like dirt when things don't work out by the fall of the curtain. She hits send, powers off, and we're ready to go. And I am sad for the passion that McCracken, he might never know. Dear McCracken, I'd rather be off this plane. I can't admit the half of it that I want to say. Do I pretend? Do I push you away? I'm jet lagging, but cracking, and I'll give you, I'll give you your. Dear McCracken, I'm keeping this on my chest. I said a lot of things, none of them what I meant. Do I pretend? Do I try to forget? I'm jet lagging, but cracking, and I wish you, I wish you the best. I 
friends had seen their worst and I thought that kind of heartache was meant for the young but were never too old to her and I thought I thought by that age our broken hearts had seen their worst and I thought that kind of heartache was meant for the young but were never too I just stepped off a plane, I've got one regret I know I'll never get closure or ever see how it ends No, I won't know his answer, what happens between them Why she kept her cards so close, even she couldn't see them What gave her such pause when she so clearly wanted To tell you all the emotions she tried so hard to bottle And I'll never know why she kept the honest truth from you But oh dear McCracken in the rough draft Oh, in the rough draft In the rough draft she loved you Thank you, everybody. Um, I'm going to have to check the archives, but I feel like that's the first time I've played Jim McCracken on stream in a minute. It, it, I, I could, have I done it in the last year? I don't even know. It's been a long time. Y'all never asked for it. so. But I got on tonight and I was like, I might play McCracken. And then somebody asked for McCracken. So, um, James, you're right. I did play it in the last minute. Um, <laughs> follow it up with echoes. Yeah, that's a good idea. Um, cool. Why don't we do a little cozy Q&A? Uh, I'll tell you what's going on in my world. You ask me what's going on in my world, um, in that order. Um, and um, it'll be fun and good. And hopefully people stick around. They tend to. Um, okay. Boom. Something, something to her info. Thank you, Cornfield Crypto, for teeing me up. Uh, tour plans. I think I need, hold on, I'm going to take this down for a second. I'm going to do, I'm going to, I don't know, too many things. I'm going to do, uh, what did I, what have I done? There it is. That's what I was trying to do. Uh, I'm going to do, <laughs> I'm going to do the, uh, the thing that normally annoys me, um, the, f that Apple has implemented where I do gestures and it does a thing, but I'm going to do it now. Matt got his visa. Uh, we found out this morning. So this tour is absolutely happening. Um, yes, I was up at uh, 3 o'clock in the morning. Uh, me and Matt were uh, chatting over Discord as they were walking around uh, London, um, getting ready for their, their interview at the at the U.S. consulate. And uh, uh, Matt is a... Is a uh, uh, recognized by the U United States of America as a rock star now, um, legally. So, um, yeah, it was so many months of stress are off of my shoulders at this moment. I am the happiest bug in the world. Um, because while I would have done these dates, um, no matter what, because I booked the venues and I've paid the deposits, um, I, me and Matt are a good team. So uh, I'm very, very happy. We worked very, very hard. I hope y'all come to these shows because if, <laughs> if y'all don't, we'll be really sad. Um, so uh, this is our plan. This is as up to date as we are right now. Um, we're hoping to have tickets on sale Friday. Those question marks are going to get resolved. Just have faith in me. Tomorrow's my day. Tomorrow's my big day to, to figure it out. Um, the whole left side is locked in. We're correct. Boise has been upgraded from a maybe to a yes. Um, so everything on the left side of that of that list is totally correct, as well as Detroit, Indianapolis, Chicago, Kansas City, Minneapolis, Madison, and St. Louis. From there, we get a little more, a little more figuring it out. Um, technically, we have locked in Austin, we have locked in Orlando, and then the other ones are ooh, just awaiting confirmation. There, we have venues we're talking to. We're like there. We just need Atlanta to email me back. I'm going to call her tomorrow because, um, you know, uh, it's been uh, email Monday, email Wednesday. You get a call Thursday. Um, 
And then Raleigh should be good. Jacksonville also should be good. Austin we've locked in today, which means that we've had to change our plans. This graphic has said Houston in the past, and I'm sorry if you're in Houston, uh, but Austin uh, had to switch us, and we just need to find things, and we have an option in Dallas on the 7th and an option in Austin on the 8th, um, and that's that's our weekend. So um, we will have tickets on sale Friday um, at noon local time, wherever you are. So um yeah, I'm really excited. But y'all y'all are kind of the first people to hear about kind of what's going on. I, I posted in our Discord this morning when it happened, um, but uh, we haven't made any like public posts about um, the visa coming through. Um, we uh, are just kind of getting all our ducks in a row and making sure that we get Nashville. We, uh, Nashville's a big one. Nashville and Raleigh are kind of the, the biggest question marks. So, um, yeah. Kevin Cole's going to see us in Detroit. Ketsoya in Minnesota. It's going to be a good one. We got a really big venue in Minnesota. It's probably too big, but that's okay. Uh-huh. Matt posted on every single one of their socials. <laughs> I'm going to go check that. I saw Matt said that there was good news and then posted an American flag, but I didn't know if Matt like said specifically. I'm going to go look. This is, this is now a React video to me looking at Matt's Instagram. Um, yeah, stressful thing done. Keep keep an eye out for news in the next 40 hours, a little American flag, and then posted a little thing of a Pokemon. It's not a real Pokemon. It's an animal, but it looks like a Pokemon. Um, anyways. Um, Mitchell Jennings has never been to a concert before. This is going to be an awesome time. It is an awesome time. Uh, if anybody came to a show uh, in the past, uh, these shows are very fun. Uh, like it's one of those things that like I get to sort of take the bias out of it because I can talk as an impartial observer of just watching Matt play. Um, I put on the best show that I can for everybody, and uh, I'm not going to sit here and be like it's awesome. People have told me it's awesome and they enjoy it, so I can at least say that. But I can for sure say that Matt's set is uh, incredible, and uh, the the one two punch of Bug Hunter and Narcissus Cookbook is. Um, it's one of my favorite things to do. It's like, you know, I, I love touring with Matt because we both do something so similar, but so differently, but you can see that there's, there's a synergy to it, but we're so different in a way that's like so identifiable, but like, yeah, um, the show's a good show. So, um, I'm, I'm very excited that we're going to be able to bring it to all of these States. Um, so real soon, June, I mean, we're less than two months away from the first show. We cut it pretty close. Um, yeah, so tickets should go up on sale on uh, Friday this week. So two two more days, a little less than 48 hours. Um, Kia says, I have a deadline to get my friends obsessed with your music. Please do, um, because here's what we did. Uh, we have previously sold out uh, many, many shows um, in the past. And uh, so we have gotten larger venues than we normally would have um, in the hopes that people will come to them and see us play. Um, and I'm very excited about that. Um, these will be some of the, they will be the biggest shows we've ever put on. Um, there, there are shows that have the potential to be bigger than anything we've ever done. Um, and that's like night after night. So, uh, I'm really excited. Um, we are both ready for the big stage. Um, so something odd is going to see us somewhere in Texas. I hope you do. Maybe both. Um, uh, Time of Stone wants to know, how soon do you recommend getting tickets? Well, uh, last year, if you wanted a ticket to any show in July, you pretty much needed to have bought it by April. I remember being on tour in April and being like, we're pretty much sold out for the summer. Like, we don't, like, I don't need to sell tickets between now and the shows. So it was like three months ahead of time. Now, like I said, venues are bigger this year, but we've also grown we've grown in ways that like you know we're we're both still doing really well i've released a new album in the meantime so i have that kind of win behind my my sales so um i would recommend getting tickets day one if you think you're gonna go um yeah i mean just to be perfectly honest it always breaks my heart when people like two days before the show message me and be like is there any tickets anywhere and sometimes we can make that happen but we're gonna be like almost entirely out of control of the tickets this year the venues that were required to play just for size like 
we can sell tickets to like eight of these shows, eight of like the 28. Most of them are going to be handled by the venues themselves. And they have, um, you know, they, they aren't as personable as I would be about things like that, where I would try and like figure something out um, and like sneak somebody in. But the venues are going to be doing that, um, which also means that my dad won't be um, taking tickets at the door at most of these shows, um, which is one of his favorite things to do, but he will still be there and introducing the show and all, all that good stuff. So um, you'll still get the, the Papa Bug experience. And maybe he'll just go outside and just greet people and say he hello. I don't know. I'll have to see what he wants to do. He's going to be restless, I can tell, because like when, he when he doesn't have to do his normal job, you know, if it's something like you know, the venue does the tickets, he's always just kind of like wandering around like, what do I do? So... Um. um jam says very excited for the continual growth of bug hunter feels like only yesterday you were you were <coughs> you were in the you were playing in the backyard little bug with a guitar oh i remember it well me too uh it i had that moment today where i was like just two years ago, I mean, if you saw us in 2022, it was probably in a in a yoga studio, or it was in the 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 lobby of a spa, or it was in a backyard or a preschool playground. We were very like we've been I mean, we've always been DIY. This tour is DIY as well, um, but um, we didn't have as many people people coming to shows, and we would just like show up with an amp and like plug into the wall and just like you know play play shows. And uh, to go from that two years ago to genuinely getting a uh, a, a very very difficult to obtain uh, uh, performance visa um, is uh, and we have lawyers it's crazy yeah Jam saw me in a record store in Glasgow um, so um, yeah Max Noble loves sitting on my blanket in Orlando watching you play yeah that was in like a photo studio that had like a stage for some reason I, I loved it I absolutely loved that tour I loved that entire year I loved every show that I played it was so fun it was so personal and like but there's there's a there's a growth element that obviously I can look and see and like be like proud of myself for uh growing it to um the place that it's at now which is these like 500 cap 600 cap venues that I'm hoping to to put people in so um gonna make a lot of friends this year really excited um <laughs> how's life outside of music and tour things i don't understand the question um life is very good outside of that um my my wife has graduated from school which if you've been following our you know my my journey over the last three years you know that i moved to virginia because my wife got into school she's done with that now and she is kicking butt and doing amazing so um going from school schedule to work schedule is like so much easier because there's no studying and so there's that's a lot more just like downtime that's been a lot of fun um and then um outside of that uh i finally beat um, the Path to Carcosa campaign in Arkham Horror only took me about eight tries, but I finally beat it so I can move on to the next campaign because I won't allow myself to move on to the next one until I beat the previous one. Um, so that's been fun. Um, uh, do I have an address for fan mail? I do. It's 1806 Summit Avenue, 300, number 63. Yes, there's two numbers. There's a sweet number and a mailbox number. So it's 1806 Summit Avenue, 300, number 63, uh, Richmond, Virginia, 23230. That's my business address, aka the place that if they tell me I have mail, I drive down and go pick it up. Thank you, Jams. Perfect. Uh, it's, did I say 23236? I meant 23230. So it'll get there. They're, no one, they're not going to get confused by the last number of the zip code and not deliver it. Um, uh, where do you sell tickets for your tour? Great question. They're going up on Friday. Um, we will have links. We will have links to um, some tickets will sell on our website because we're able to. We try to negotiate everywhere that we could. A lot of the venues were just like, if we can't do tickets, like we have a contract, like we can't do your show. Like there, there is no negotiating this. Um, so some of the venues will be selling tickets, but we will have pages on our website, bughunterbug.com, that will link to those tickets. So if you want to like make sure that you're not like on some like. Bug Hunter's not big enough to have like weird um, like 
after market ticket sites or like scam sites or whatever. But if you want to be sure that you ha like are definitely in the right spot, you can go to our website, you know it's our website, and then click on the link that we give you, which we get directly from the, the, the venue coordinator. So um, yeah, those will be up Friday. It should be noon local time. Um, and yeah, cool. Um, would you ever do a fan mail opening stream? Uh, I don't get enough fan mail to do that. I get something like once every like month or two. Um, yeah, so uh, it would be very short. And sometimes, I don't know, uh, fan mail could be uh, pr but private thoughts that people have that, you know, if they want to say something to me about what their music, my music has meant to them, um, then I don't want to like read it out on a stream either, so... I deserve to be big enough for scalpers. Um, yeah, I, you know, I'm hoping things are, are changing and moving in, in ways that, um, you know, or uh, there's been like talks about like legislation to prevent kind of like the, the junk fees on tickets and, and um, you know, hopefully breaking up uh, the ticket master monopoly, um, which we've kind of avoided for this one. There's, I think there's one ticket master venue and then the rest are not ticket master. I don't know if they're owned by ticket master. They might be, you know, how companies do, but, um, uh, noon local is noon, noon local to the venue. Yeah. So whatever city that you're looking at local to that city, um, uh, whatever, when it's noon in that city, that's when the ticket should go on sale or so I've instructed everybody to do. We'll see if they'll see how this rollout goes. Uh, Emberis says, recently found your music and my husband and I love it and can't wait to come to Arizona. I'll see you on um, June 8th. I'm excited for that one. We had a great time in Phoenix last year. Um, there was a chance that we might have skipped Phoenix, um, but I'm glad that it worked out that we're not because um, we wanted to mix up some of the cities, but then we just found this perfect gap um, where if we had had a, if we had gotten a Friday in San Diego, it may have been difficult to, we would have taken a break maybe and not played a show in Phoenix and skipped over it to Albuquerque. But because we then did Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday in California, then we have Friday off as a break so we can rest. And then Saturday we'll hit it in, in Phoenix. So, uh, Time wants to know, how do we manage our time in the car driving for so many hours? So my dad drives the whole time. So he's the one driving. We have done podcasts. When me and my dad, when we've toured alone, it's just the two of us. Um, we were getting through the balance arc of uh, the adventure zone, which was really fun. Um, but then, you know, introducing other people into the van, there's, you know, Jesse and Kyle and Matt, it becomes like, not everybody wants to listen to it or they're not at the same point. So we'd have to like restart and we're like 30 episodes in. Uh, so we, I, I think we did, uh, Kyle started us on like dungeons and daddies or, or so something to that effect. I, I actually fell asleep during the first episode of that they seem to enjoy it but i just um i was tired that day and so i missed half the episode um and then we will do music sometimes uh kyle and jesse will also work from the van sometimes uh, in order to be able to come on tour because you know it's a certain amount of like vacation time that they get from their jobs uh and so sometimes it is just like two hours of kyle being in a in a zoom call and we're just quietly like matt play switch i do a lot of venue coordination stuff and sending out emails and jesse is always working on music on his um on his laptop so yeah sometimes we'll we'll uh, connect the switches and we'll play uh rocket league me and kyle have had some pretty great rocket league matches uh ultimate chicken horse is one that we like to play in the car um if you have any good local area network nintendo switch games that are good for four players um then uh let us know so Castle Crashers? Cool. I don't like Mario Kart. I'm sorry. I just don't like it. I wish I I wish I did. I never I never really liked Smash Bros and I never really liked Mario Kart. I've played Mario Kart, but like I just don't I don't enjoy it. I don't know. Like I get to the end of a race and I like I don't think let's play let's race again. Like I don't know. It's just there's just something it doesn't doesn't do it for me. I play it though. I mean, I won't like not play it, but I've n I, I don't seek it out. So, 
Violet Blight noticing Dallas got added back. It's still a maybe, but um, it's the most likely thing right now. Um, yeah, so. Uh, Boomerang Fu, uh, we've played that. Jesse showed me and, and Matt that um, once, and it was fun. Mario Party would probably be something that I would like more. I love mini games. The amount of time my brother and I spent playing the mini games in um, FIFA rather than playing FIFA, I'm I'm big on, I'm super big on um, mini games. Uh, I've done Overcooked before. Uh, it gets too stressful for me. I, I wish there was a version of Overcooked where like, I mean, <laughs> this is a this is a skill issue clearly, but like even like the early levels, it's like you can't do everything. I want to get I want to solve Overcooked, and I'm sure that if you're good enough, you can. But I just also didn't want to put in the time to do it, so I take back what I said. It's probably fine. I'm just bad at it. Um, plate up I have not heard of I saw that there was a kind of an overcooked genre game that was about like moving furniture out of a house and putting it in a moving truck um, but like all the physics are like really jelly wonky um, but I haven't played it me and Kyle were playing uh, it takes two um, long time ago now it was probably like two years ago now um, and I would love to go back and finish that one I'll probably, honestly, bring my laptop and load up Tabletop Simulator and play Arkham Horror. Because a lot of these shows I'll have to do a lot less coordination than, than last year. Last year I was kind of the, uh, if people needed refunds, if people needed, you know, hey, this or that. But, like, the venues are taking it out of our hands this year, so I won't have to do as much this year. So, um um, cool. I'm going to do another song. My honey thinks I'm a coward My sweetheart thinks I'm a dud My sweetheart swears I'm a bit too meek My lover doubts I'm a fighter My sugar is sure I am neither My baby doll sprinkle but thinks I'm weak so you say to me, why can't you be more like Bug Hunter? Fighting petty thieves behind the Wendy's, thwarting robberies, defending all the cowards too afraid to be Bug Hunter. A vigilante and a fighter pulling grannies out of fires, though his spandex is too tight. We love Bug Hunter. You can run, you can hide, can you change my mind? My honey thinks I'm a coward, that I have no superpowers, that I'm just the average sloppy joe. But you say, no, I'll give you some credit, you do seem athletic. When you run, jump, leap from the scene and exit, you might be prophetic, at least telepathetic. So I'm thinking of a hero, no need to guess it, it might sting, but let it I be yours if it be a bit more like Bug Hunter. When the skateboard park collapsed, guess who dressed up in his mask with 20 grannies on his back? That's right, Bug Hunter. Whereas you were not around, you disappeared when it went down. I found your clothes thrown on the ground. Why were you naked? Forget it. You can run, you can hide, can you change a mind made up? You can run, you can hide, can you change my mind's made up? But do you wonder why there's so much spandex in my laundry when you wash it? Please stop putting it in the dryer. And when I missed your birthday, did you catch the news that night? Cause if you'd watched it, you'd note the lack of crannies dying on your birthday. 
and do you ever wonder why the honeybee kidnaps you every weekend? Forcing me, I mean bug hunter, to come save you. And you never say thank you. Or see us in the same room. My honey thinks I'm a coward. Eyes closed and all set to judge. You can run, I can hide, I can't change. Your mind's made up. So go ahead and call me a coward. The truth hurts, a lie never does. I'd rather fight crime than your mind when your mind's made up. Um, Violet Blight said, this one took a while to grow on me, but it's a really strong one. I think so too. I think Coward um, is a super strong song and it's overshadowed by just about every other song on happiness. Um, just, I don't know. There, There's a lot going on in that album and Coward is... Of all the songs on happiness, it leans a little bit more on the rest of the album to kind of come away with a, uh, an, an overall meaning, um, where I feel like if you listen to Shocking Plot just by itself, you listen to Two Beds, Two Bath, and it goes by itself, you listen to um, 30 Plan by itself, uh, almost basically all of them, um, they're a little more standalone, coward. When wh what I wanted to do with happiness is that every song stands on its own, you can hear it, you don't need the rest of the album, but when you listen to it with the album, there's just, oh, okay. There's something else going on. Uh, whereas uh, Coward, of all the other songs, leans just a little bit more on the album um, than, than the other ones do. Um, and so I think that might have something to do with why it uh, isn't regarded as like top 10 from happiness. But I do, I do really love it a lot. I wanted to write a song with that idea for so long. I can't even, I can't even tell you the number of times I've like formulated what a, a, a superhero misidentity song would kind of look like, and I'm like so happy with like how it came out. So. Um, Kevin Cole says, I remember y'all pulling instruments out and playing for a couple of kids who couldn't enter the venue because they weren't 21. Um, I remember that too. Um, I was in Chattanooga and it was a super, super early, you know, uh, show. If, you know, they're, they're, those were two kids that they were, you know, whatever, 18. They couldn't come in as a 21 plus show. Um, you know, they were 10% of all of the people there that night to see Bug Hunter. There was a very long time ago where, you know, there's a, a, just a few people, 20 maximum, that were there to, to see us. Um, and yeah, they caught us, um, they caught us going in to sound check. We had a little bit of time to kill, so we played them a song in the parking lot. There's a video of it um, uh, on, on our YouTube. It's one of our like oldest like YouTube videos. Um, and then his, the, the, the guy, um, his older brother, ended up seeing us, I think, later that year in, um, in Texas and, um, you know, got to talk to him and, and talk about that story. It was fun. So. Um, but I don't, I don't know if those two ever made it to another show. I'm trying to remember if, if they did. I don't know if I caught up with them um, about it. But I hopefully, hopefully they have since, since then. It was Chattanooga. We've never gone back to Chattanooga, but we've played in Nashville a few times, so. Um, who does the backing vocals and listen to your mom? Uh, that is uh, my good friend. Her name is Stephanie May. She does the backing vocals in Listen to Your Mom and Deserve Me. And I think uh, a, a little bit on in Take It Back. Um, kind of the the harmonies at the end of um, Take It Back. But uh, more prominently featured in Listen to Your Mom and, and then Deserve Me as well. So uh, look up Stephanie May's music. It's like M-A-E. Um, it's super good. It's like really good pop music um 
And I think she's based out of Portland. I met her in Seattle, but I'm pretty sure that she moved to Portland. So if you're an, a Portland person, definitely like follow her on like Instagram and go to her shows. What's something you've wanted to do as an artist and never had the opportunity to or have had the time to do? I mean, there's a lot of things opportunity-wise. I, I can go on about that all day. There's, I'd love to open for a lot of bands. Um, I'd love to be asked to be Saturday Night Live's um, guest, music, musician guest, and ha be introduced by some unproblematic celebrity I'm not even going to say a name because I'm so out of touch. I would probably say somebody who is a bad person. So, um. Um. yeah, that would be fun. Or like a late night show with an unproblematic late night host. Pick one. <laughs> um. Yeah. That'd be cool. I would love to um, uh, write a, any type of music for the McElroy brothers. Um, I remember a couple years ago they were looking for a new theme song, and I was like, this is my moment. This is it. Disco in the Panic Room, my Bim Bam theme song. Let's do it. It's perfect. It's got a very cool f first line. It has a great bass breakdown into the money zone. This is going to be the perfect song. And I tweeted at them a couple times, but then they didn't they didn't respond to it or do anything. So. Um, but they did just have, they're, they're doing like a, a YouTube show now and their, their theme song is by uh, Nick Let's Go, who is like very, very much in my algorithm. So like, oh man, if they know who Nick Let's Go is, there's like a, between that and then Deep Blue Ink, like doing my like animated videos and them working with Deep Blue Ink on their animated videos, there's like, I think there's like a 50% chance that may, maybe one of them has heard of Bug Hunter. I would love that. Uh, what was the hardest song to put together? Um, put together. That's an interesting way of phrasing it. It was not right, but put together. Um, I'll go by album, and I'll go with my gut of which, which ones were the hardest to kind of figure out. Uh, happiness, not like that. It was pretty straightforward. I knew it was a rock song. 30 Plan took a little bit until I kind of found the riff. And like the vibe, the groove of it, the first minute of it was very kind of like talky and kind of it just kind of dragged on until I found that there was a groove to be to be had in the in the first minute. Um, platonic was easy. Too bad, too bath. Too bad, too bath was very difficult in the um, in the tempo world um, because we recorded that song remotely. Um, and there, the bridge is it's like got four different tempos. Um, they, there's there's several severe tempo changes and there's a, even one like as the as the it's getting louder and louder above me that's like actually a sloped tempo so it's getting faster every tick um so that one was a very tricky one to like get right but i'm very happy that i got it right um um plot twist the only difficult thing about that one was figuring out how to start it because it used to just start it was just like Harrison had a perfect life and it was just like that's not a hook that's not a hook um and so I took the um there's a part in the middle that we go um it was a shocking plot twist oh, 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 oh. I took that part that we recorded for the middle of the song and I just copied and pasted it to the beginning um and then yeah and then I was like cool that's a cool intro and then it kind of like warps into those first chords um and i was very pleased with um that as kind of just like a quick little five second hook um but yeah i'm just going song by song now um bedtime story what was difficult about that one that was a fun one to make i think coming up with the uh, the bear voices were the last thing that, that fell into place on that one there was a version of the song that didn't have the bear voices and it wasn't as good um Alchemical Romance, 
the the middle bit was very fun to figure out what that looked like um but there was never really a demo of it that didn't sound kind of like it you know i I, ne I never like i never figured it out on acoustic guitar and then took that into production i like wrote the first half of the song and then i was like let me get weird real quick and i was like there's there's um clock chimes in it there are there's a, the, a very very slight sound of a baby crying in in those sections that is meant to not be heard but to tap into your um your subconscious brain that is always listening for babies crying because we have that um and make make you stressed out uh, a little bit um what else is in there just some like slow down time stuff um yeah um you can't hear it go you don't go listen to it um because you won't hear it but it's there um just like you won't be able to hear um, Ladybug's little ghost sounds at the end of Two Bed, Two Bath, and a Ghost because they're they're in there and they're so cute. They're like, Woo! but uh, you can't hear it. It's not it's not audible. So, um, the the baby crying part is in like the transition. The um, what's going on? That part. Um, uh, yeah, you you won't be able to hear it. It's just in there just enough. It's covered so um I'm trying to think of what other oh you know you know what you also can't hear but it's, it's definitely super super there is um when i was working on the robin bank uh finished track with jesse uh i was trying to explain to him what i kind of wanted for the solo um, which is a great solo jesse did an amazing job but what some people don't know is that it was not um it was not an original solo it was a transcription of me doing a mouth solo I was like, what if it sounds like this? And I recorded myself like singing the solo as if I was a guitar and sent it to him. And he was like, okay, cool. And then he played that. Sounds amazing. But my vocal take of that solo is technically still in there um, as, as just as um, kind of body, as, as mass. Um, so uh, you won't be able to hear it. You have no idea, but it's there. It's super there. Um, it's at like negative 20 decibels, but it's there, um, which isn't as low as it sounds. Negative 20 sounds really, really low, but like zero is like really, really loud. So, um, um, anything else? Yeah, that didn't answer any question. So, um, what time are we at? I started this one late. Yeah, okay. I'll do I'll do my last song now. Sorry I started late today. I um, Ladybug got home a little late and um I made her a burger and was sitting with her doing the wordle. Um and it wasn't a moment that I felt needed to end. Um so I'm trying to think if I can think of any other Easter egg sounds. I mean most people know the little um end of not like that if you um, you might need headphones to hear it but the little oh my god no that is at the end of not like that um that i just did as a joke on a demo vocal take it was literally not even in, in the studio it's just like literally sitting right here uh and i was recording the demo vocals and i just got to the end and just said that and then people uh who heard the demo liked that bit so much i didn't even try and re-record it i just literally took that and i just put it at the end of the song um there's kazoo and bragging. Jams is right about that. Um, it is in the last chorus, I believe. Um, yeah. Um, what do you, you all want to hear? Um, let, let me know in the comments. <laughs> or the live chat. Don't put it in the comments. I can't read the comments right now. Um, I did have a thought. No, never mind. Uh, I see some Chase, some Magic 8, Magic Chase, Gulf Coast, Two Bed, Two Bath, and a Gulf, uh, Dollar Sign Slacks, Not Like That, Safe Word, Creature, So Hateful Bug, what did I do? I don't even know what I did this time. Oh, was it me not saying what I was going to say? Yeah, I just realized that I was like going to make a joke and I didn't really have a punchline, so um, I'm not trying to keep something from you. I just I was like, oh wait, no, that's only a half of a thought. I need to finish that but I'll do it off stream. Don't worry. My, my filter is for y'all. It's not for me. It's to give you good content. Um, all right, I've seen enough. 
I didn't mean this is about to sound so aggressive. I am a creature of habit. My tastes are removable. I order the usual and I already know what I want. Keep your menu, I know what I want. Because the options are endless, they're overwhelming at times You just have too much to sell me, so many things to decide You may mock me for opting for what is already mine But what if my cookie cutter is one of a kind? I think there's too much to choose And I've had it Don't change me, creature of habit Explain. I'm not that anxious to changes I'm not afraid to adapt or think it's actually dangerous It's just a preference to routine and familiar faces I won't break down or die if I just happen to break it I keep the cost of myself I feel it's reeking of ego and it's a fine line to walk So I am threading that needle It's just the whole human race Ooh, I can take them or leave them And I can say that I swear some of my best friends are people It just feels so good when I planned it Same time, same place Creature of left foot, right foot Same way around But with this push I put my foot down Yeah, this time I want change I'm gonna do something crazy Actually, no, I'm not gonna act like you asked me to act Like a simple machine checking task after task I'm my own human being and I happen to lack The need to be seen chasing fat after fat and I know there's a world full of wonders to see With places to go and pancakes to eat But I base what I know on what things bring me peace My circadian soul likes the pace and the beat That maintains my breathing, blood flow and sleep But won't lift my feet or break my routine So left foot, right foot, same way round Thank you. Um, somebody asked me either, um, I don't rem you know what, it wasn't on a stream. It was at the VIP event in uh, Richmond uh, a couple weeks ago. Uh, they asked me um, what the, the canonical superheroes in the, in the Bug Hunter universe are based off Coward. And I, I remember thinking, oh, I have a few of these off the top of my head, but there was a couple more that I couldn't remember. Um, that uh and i just remembered that one of the villains uh canonically uh, in the bug hunter uh superhero universe is creature of left foot um definitely a villain also the local gopher was another one that i forgot to say on stage the local gopher is definitely uh, a superhero in that world as well uh and the average sloppy joe of course um anyways some more lore uh, for for nobody Um, old man next door? No. He? No. I don't think so. Nice try, though, Paul. Better luck next guest. Um, cool. Hey, everybody. Uh, uh, Big Bear and Small Bear, obviously a, a duo. Yeah, the local gopher. Um, 
is kind of with them but um uh thanks everybody for coming to my stream it, it was really fun and i love playing songs for you and i love telling you about all my good news which includes uh, if you've missed it matt uh matt got the visa we found out this morning uh is a is a is a 4 a.m um 4 a.m uh announcement to me in discord um and i have been uh, I would want to say celebrating today. You know, I know how I celebrated. I invented the most delicious dessert that anyone's ever created in the history of the world. Um, I'm going to tell you what it is right now. I think I came up with this. I don't think anybody's ever done this. It's so good. I just had uh we we got this ice cream maker and so we've been making uh d different mix-ins into our into our ice cream maker so we've been making like Oreo and making s'mores and stuff. And so uh, we we don't have any ice cream, but I do have a lot of ingredients for different ice cream um mix-ins. So what I made today was I took a graham cracker. A normal honey graham cracker um by the normal brand that does them. Um and then take a, a little knife full of marshmallow cream like the jet puff stuff and you spread that all across the um, graham cracker and then on top of that you lay a trail of um cherry pie filling because you can just buy cherry pie filling at the store it's amazing uh and that's it it's a little graham cracker with marshmallow cream and cherry pie filling on top of it it's so good i'm gonna post a picture of it in our discord right now this is this is clickbait this is discord bait if you aren't in our discord go to our discord and i'm gonna post i'm posting a picture i took some bites out of it so that maybe doesn't look as appetizing as it could but this is the only picture i have of it um oh, it's so good it's oh man anyways get into our discord look at my cherry graham cracker art um mm -hmm. advisory tick just said wait that's so good that's a kind of that's a kind of content you're missing out on if you're not in our discord um cool uh tickets are on sale friday uh if you haven't filled out that form that i we passed around you should go fill it out it's not necessary but we'll you know it'll be a, a good reminder at about noon uh, when tickets are up uh don't don't be a, a a late person and not get tickets this year um so anything else i feel like i normally have more stuff to say but um i don't right now so uh i'll i won't be streaming sunday i'm going to dc so y'all are gonna have to meet up somewhere else go <laughs> find a wendy's and you can all meet up there and hang out on sunday but it's not gonna be my yard so uh, hopefully you'll have fun doing that all coordinating all 47 of you finding another place to hang out at noon on sunday when i normally stream so um and that's it, and also Goober's uh, go bed. <laughs>